We want to welcome all our online church, online guests. Clap your hands. Appreciate all those who are joining us online. Hallelujah. Uh, quickly, turn your Bibles with me. First John chapter 5. We are studying the subject of faith. Faith. Faith in God. We have seen as a foundation that faith is important because without faith, you cannot relate with God. Without faith, you cannot receive from God. Without faith, you cannot exercise the dominion of God. Without faith, you cannot obtain a good testimony. Not a testimony that is necessarily good in the sight of men, but a testimony that is good in the sight of God. Requires faith. As you know, without faith, it is impossible to please him. We need faith to run and finish our race in this life. Say amen. Glory to God. We're looking at faith to exercise dominion. Faith to exercise dominion. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to 1 John 5 and 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Hallelujah. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Hallelujah. Not born of men, but born of God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. This is important. Because there's a difference between those who are born of God and those who are born of men. I'm not talking about your flesh. This is a spiritual reality. When you give your life to Jesus, when you believe that Jesus is the Christ, something happens on the inside. A miracle takes place. God imparts a life to the human spirit. And that life brings a rebirth. You are born again. Not flesh, spirit. Your spirit man is born again. Your spirit man is born of God. Which means God gave birth to you. Say amen. Wow. Wow. Now look at verse 4. Verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So in verse 1, we're told we're born of God. Now in verse, two, in verse 4, we're told that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So whatever includes whoever. Oh Lord, help me somebody. Glory to Jesus. And so if you happen to be a whoever, in this whatever equation. It means that you overcome this world by birth. Oh my God. It's your birthright. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now watch this. It says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Why did he say that? Because in verse 1, he said, whoever. In verse 4, he said, whatever. Because he wants to include something outside of you that is also born of God. He wants to include faith. He says, when you are born of God, your faith is also born of God. That's the whatever. Is somebody here with me? And that whatever, he says, is how you overcome this world. There's a faith on the inside that you receive at the new birth. There's a faith, it's a faith of God. This faith enables you to overcome the forces of this world. Hallelujah. Enables you to overcome the wickedness in this world. Enables you to overcome all the, all the cravings, all the forces, all the, all the spirits of this world. You overcome by your faith. So this is a faith that brings dominion. 
So this faith I'm talking about is what you need to exercise dominion. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're born again, you are not an ordinary person. You are not. You have to accept that as a reality. If God says I'm not ordinary, if God says he gave birth to me, then, then the question is, what did God give birth to? Did he give birth to dogs? Because he ate no dog. Dogs give birth to dogs. Goats give birth to cows give birth to horses give birth to men give birth to what did God give birth to? Now you talk more. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We're talking about dominion. We said there, there, there are two broad phases when it comes to dominion. Two broad phases. The first phase is private, your private space. And the second phase is your public space. You have to learn how to exercise dominion in your private space so that when you are exalted to a public space you won't embarrass yourself you have to learn how to deal with the demons that come to your house before you deal with the demons that come to your office oh lord somebody help me this morning you have to learn how to deal with the temptation that came before success. Before you deal with, this, with the temptation that comes with success. Which is greater. Are you with me? Paul says I've learned how to be abased. Then I've also learned how to abound. But first you learn how to abase. You learn how to conquer. How to dominate when you don't have money. Then when you have money you have practiced dominance. Or else, when money comes, it exposes your lack of integrity. Say amen, no? Amen. It exposes that you're not prepared. Because that private space is where you practice. It's where you can make a mistake and nobody will judge you. The public space is a place of judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you still here with me? That's why the Bible warns us, it says, it says don't be in a hurry to become a teacher of people because they, they will go through stricter judgment, those who teach people. When you taught yourself, there wasn't much judgment. When you stepped out to teach people, every word you say, you'll be held accountable. They'll hold you accountable. You said this now. How far? You say we should walk like this. Why are you walking like this? Is somebody still here with me? Someone say my time has come. Yes, it is. That's why Jesus had to go into the wilderness first. Why? Because in the wilderness, he had to practice dominion in the private space. Amen? Him and the devil face to face. No public. Nobody to assess him. Him, the Holy Ghost and Satan. Privacy. He walked through the temptations. He dealt with it. And the Bible says he returned to the public in the power of the spirit. Next thing you know, he enters the synagogue with confidence. Why? Because he has done something in private. Something happens when you conquer in private. There's a confidence you have. When you see that problem again, you know I've dealt with this thing before. I can handle it now. Say amen. amen. Glory to Jesus. You must learn how to dominate in private before you are rushing to the public space. You must practice. You must allow the Holy Ghost to train you well for warfare. Because whether you like it or not, life is warfare. 
If you haven't figured that out by now, then I wonder which, which world you are in. Say amen. Glory to Jesus. I want to, I want to give you, you see, when we talk about the private space, we're really talking about three things. We're talking about thoughts, emotions, and decisions. Thoughts and emotions have to do with your inner man, your soul. Decisions have a lot to do with your inner man, but not, in, not alone, in conjunction with your flesh. Because when you get to your flesh, you have to place your flesh under subjection to make the right decision. So when it comes to this private space, thoughts, emotions, and decisions, glory to God. And I want to prove to you today, not only that we have authority over thoughts, but we have a principle in scripture that shows us how to deal with thoughts. Say amen. If you can conquer, if you can exercise dominion in the area of thoughts, your life will be stable. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are, who have been publicly announced, but they are a mess on the inside. I'm talking from experience. I've seen people like that. I've talked to people. I've counseled people who I'm scared when I talk to them because I'm like, what are you doing up there? And you are like this. What are you doing up there? So we have to go through some kind of quick boot camp. Because you're already up there. You can't come down now. So we have to do boot camp quickly. We have to teach you how to reject thoughts. How to take them captive. Hallelujah. How to make decisions. How to resist temptation. Say amen. amen. Does anybody want to hear this message this morning? Glory to Jesus. Dominion over thoughts. Let me just give you a list of different kinds of thoughts so that we're not in some abstract place. Say amen. amen. Temptation is a thought. For you to be tempted, a thought had to come. A, a, a thought of temptation. Say amen. So we have, in the area of thoughts, we have temptation. We have deception. Deception came as a thought. Something that was going to deceive you. How did it get to you? It came as a thought. Say amen. amen. Wickedness starts with a thought. There's no wicked action on earth that did not begin with a thought. The wicked thought led to what? Wicked action. If the man had conquered wickedness in his thought life, he would not have fallen victim to wickedness in action. Say amen. Oppression is a thought. Hallelujah. The reason why you are oppressed because you think you are. Oh my God. Some of you get out on the way home. On the way home, you catch it. Amen. The reason why someone says, I'm addicted to this is because you think you are. If I can get you to think differently, you will drop it instantly. Say amen. amen. Glory to God. Pastor, pastor, my own is woman. I can't just help myself. When I say woman, I just... I just... It's because you think so. You've been thinking so for a long time. Even since you were in secondary school, you began to think so. You entered university, you, you, it was reinforced. Now you come out and your mind is me, 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 me. You call your name me. I cannot help it when I see a fine woman. I'm God. You say it. Because you are saying it because what you say is the result of the predominance of your thinking. A man speaks out of the abundance of his heart. Which means because you're saying it, it means it is, it is, it is, it is, it is mighty in your thinking. And that's why you're a victim of that problem. Because of how you think. If you change a man's thinking, you have changed his destiny. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why when you get saved, the first thing God tells, wants you to do, he says, he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. Then you can prove the will of God. Because your mind is renewed. Your will will change and line up with the will of God. 
Because your mind is renewed with God's word. You are thinking like God thinks. Amen. Are you still here? Glory to Jesus. This is the battlefield. It's in between your ears. The greatest battle taking place today on earth is not Russia versus Ukraine. Do you know before that battle started, there was a battle in the minds of people. Before somebody fired the first shot, he thought well. He thought well. He calculated. He imagined. He reasoned. And then he said, let's fire. So the war already started before the war started. When is your husband and wife fighting? It didn't start then. That is the kitty kitty kata kata side. Before the kitty kitty kata kata, there was you want to you want to you want to worry about big boys. You want to chill with the big boys. Before we got to kitty kitty kata kata, we were trying to chill with the big boys. Some of you are confused. No problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Incidentally, you don't need to chill with the big boys because you can chill with the biggest boy. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the light. Jesus my peace. Jesus my confidence. He's the biggest boy. Go and chill with Jesus. If you chill with Jesus, you don't need to chill with nobody else. Come on, somebody. Oh, glory to God. And when you chill with Jesus, there will be no kitty kitty kata kata. I'm preaching real good now. Come on. Come on, somebody. Give somebody a high five and tell them it's true. It's true. Big boys. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thoughts of sinfulness. You don't just sin. You thought about it. Thoughts of perversion. You don't just someone say, well, I was born like this. No, you were not. At some point, a thought was introduced. A wrong thought that made you a man start looking at other men the way you should look at a woman. What happened? You were not born like that. A thought was introduced. Are you still here with me? Doubt is a thought. Doubt is a thought that contradicts your primary convictions. That's doubt. Worry is a thought. What about fear? Fear is a thought. A thought that is not based on God's word. But usually based on who? Satan's word. Satan says you will die. And then you have thoughts of death. God says you will live. So why don't you choose God's word? Say choose. What you think on is your choice. And let me help somebody here. Let me tell you how it works. If Satan wants you to get the wrong thought now, how does he do it? Because Jesus already disarmed him. So he doesn't have authority. If he had authority like you think he does, he would have killed you by now. You're alive. He doesn't have authority. He would have wiped us all out. So what's going on here? If he doesn't have authority, how come he achieves certain things at certain, certain times, certain people? Because he gets to use their own authority against them. How? Twisted thinking. If he can capture your mind, he will turn your mind against you. Then you open your mouth and you curse yourself. People are speaking against themselves because Satan succeeded in giving you a wrong thought. How does he do it? Words. Everybody close your eyes. Don't worry. You can hold your wallet. Hold it, but close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Listen to my words. Listen. This morning, coming to church, I brought a dog just to demonstrate this particular 
principle. I brought a dog. Uh, Joseph, bring my dog. Bring it. Bring my black dog. Pitbull. It's black but has white tail. Some of you have opened your eyes already. This would... <laughs> You did it. At that point, you said, I'm not, I'm not closing my eye again. What is it? Is it by, is it by force? Or somebody must close their eyes. <laughs> what? Somebody had pit bull. One eye open. So, what, what illustration is this? There isn't pit bull inside dog, inside church. Listen, listen. As I was speaking, I can bet you, none of you saw D-O-G. The letters, D-O-G. Nobody. What you saw was a literal dog. You saw a picture of a dog. And the more I described it, the more you began to form a picture. That's why you opened your eyes, some of you. Because after you formed a certain picture, you said, no more. I, I refuse to continue along this journey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because thoughts are interpreted in your mind as what? Sorry, words are interpreted in your mind as what? Thoughts. Pictures. So when I speak, your mind catches my words in a picture which becomes a thought. So when Satan wants to give you a thought, he speaks. Now you may not hear him because you, have, because you won't hear Satan with your physical ears. Alright? But you, you will hear him with your spiritual ears. How do you know you heard him? Because suddenly a thought flashed across. You were doing something else. And then suddenly, whew, the thought flashed across. That's because in the realm of the spirit, somebody spoke. Somebody said something. A witch somewhere spoke. And said, he would die by accident. Suddenly, you had a flash. Whew, you saw yourself in an accident. A thought flew across. Now, here's the problem. Thoughts have a right to fly across but don't have a right to remain. Did you hear what I said? Just like birds, birds, birds have a right to fly over my head, but dare not perch on my head. That's why many miss it. Because the thought came and then tried to perch and you left it. And then you began to meditate on it. You began to think on it. I would die. And then you start saying it. You are cursing yourself. I would die. Hey, I would die. I would die. Kai, what's going on? Pastor, pastor, I'm afraid I'm going to die soon. Or I'm going to die soon. That's why when you talk like that, my first response is shut up. We have to shut the cycle quickly. And then I have to now speak over you. Loud. I will say, you are not dying. Say, Pastor, ah, oh, you didn't hear. I said, shut up, you're not dying. Why? It's warfare. I'm trying to save your life. Many of you don't know when you came to church, your life was saved because of what you heard. Say, amen. amen. So when you hear me say some things, you better say it loud, amen. amen. When I tell you, you're not dying. Amen. You are not dying, you will live. You will live well. You'll finish the assignment of God in your life. You'll finish your race. No witch will take you out. No sickness will take you out. No accident will take you out. You are not born to fail. You are born to succeed. You will succeed. And you will succeed. And your life will rise from glory to glory. Your life will move forward. It will never move backwards again. Say amen. Amen is not a religious word. It's an agreement. So you man, oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I want to give you five, five steps. I may not finish everything, but I'll just start. Five steps to exercising your faith in the area of dominion over thoughts. Number one, 
It's found in Psalm 1 verse 1. Let's go to Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1 quickly. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands, watch this, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits, oh my God, in the seat of his comfort. Notice, he said, blessed is a man who doesn't walk in a certain place or stand in a certain place. You see, the walking is active participation. The standing is passive participation. The one that's even worse is when you sat. But it began by walking in the wrong place. Then you stood and paused and began to engage with that place. Then you sat down because now they've convinced you you're comfortable. The first step is manage your environment. Many people have an environmental problem. Where you are is causing the problem. Amen? You keep, oh, here we go again. You keep chilling out with the big boys. Amen? But you know every time you go to that same place, they say things. They do things. It affects you. It weakens you. Temptation starts to arise. And then you went there the next day. And then the next day, now it's really, you're, you're now contemplating. You're now contemplating. Nothing wrong with this. These guys are doing it. They're getting away with it. Why can't I just do the same? Environment. Manage your environment. Now there's some environments you can't even live. Because maybe, for instance, it's even where you work. So you have to learn how to manage that environment. There's a way to manage it. That's why it's important to pray. Be prayerful. And that's why it's important to speak words over that atmosphere. Say amen. amen. And that's what's important to show people you are not easily subdued. They should have some degree of respect for you. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. Amen. Ladies, let me tell you something. By the time a man easily, you will go to a man's office to get contract easily, he will just tap your bum bum. There was something you were projecting. Because as a way you walk into that office, fear will catch him. He will be tempted to, to tap the bum bum, right? Because if a bum bum is present, it's, 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 But he saw how you walked in. He saw your confidence. He saw you're not here to play. So he will go another way. He will try to win you over. Are you with me? Manage your environment. Praise the Lord. Well, my kids were much younger. Because of this computer age, they began to use computers. But I know the internet is it's a worldwide web of darkness. Amen? Are you with me? So what we did was we put the computer in the di on the dining table. Anybody that wants this computer go to the dining table in the parlor. All of us are here. Don't go inside the room with your computer. Use it here. So that once in a while I just walk by and look at it. And even if, even if you think you are so sharp that you will just quickly do something that I wouldn't know. You don't know I'm watching you. I wasn't born yesterday. No, sir. These kids, they think we're born yesterday. No, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. That's the thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's an eye movement that I know. I understand it. It's where you do your eye. I'll just say, come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> come out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give me message, Psalm 1 verse 1. Message translation. How well God must like you. You don't hang out at sin saloon. You don't slink along dead end road. You don't go to smart mouth college. Environmental. Say amen somebody. 
Be careful about your space. Where are you going to? Boundaries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. No. Amen. Have you ever seen two people committing fornication on the streets? Why? It's the wrong environment. So you're safer to take your girlfriend who you are not married yet, take her on a walk down the street, all of us who are seeing you. But when you go and have private date, you don't even go to a restaurant. You say, let's order food and drinks and then let's go to my house and let's pray. <laughs> let's pray about our union so that God will give us wisdom. What time? What time? What time? What time? 11 p.m. 12. Well, it's late. We can't, you know, there are many bandits around these days. Lock the door very well. Let us finish our prayers. Then we start praying. Then you'll see people praying fervently. That fervency is not by the spirit. It's by hormonal impact. He was looking at her. She was Environment. Someone say environment. These things are very practical, though. Number two, watch your meditation. Watch your meditation. In other words, watch what you start to think on. The thought flashed across does not mean I am thinking on it. But if I hold it and I start to think on it and I start to play with it, I am now meditating. I am pondering. Give me, uh, go back to the New King James. Then give me the next verse, verse 2. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Next verse. It says, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. Nothing will interfere. Nothing. You are grounded, you are rooted. Because of your meditation. Whose leaf also shall not wither. You are glorious. Your, your life is fresh. Your skin is fresh. People who have right meditation, watch them. It's more powerful than makeup. Believe me. Come on. Hallelujah. Because of who can put makeup. And it is real makeup. Amen? Beneath the makeup, what do we have? Some of you even use too much makeup. I've told you before. Cool down, cool down. The makeup should accentuate your, your features, not cover it. We don't even know who we're looking at again. Remember when you marry your husband, you, after you wipe your makeup, you say, no, no, no. No, 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 no. You are, you, you are not the one. You are not Rachel, you are Leah. I bind you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Since your leaf shall not wither, you're fresh through life because you, how you think. You smile more. You notice that? You, 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 because, because your meditation is right. Whatever you do shall prosper. Say amen. amen. Number three, use your tongue wisely. Use your tongue wisely. Don't forget what I said. Thoughts started with words. But I have news for you. You can also take thoughts captive by what you say. Amen? This is what Jesus taught us now. So let's look at the life of Jesus as we close. I can't finish the whole message, but I'll just stop here. Matthew 4. Verse 2. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2. Watch this. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after what he was hungry. Next verse. 
Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Now, he didn't literally see Satan. Satan came to him the same way he comes to you. How? Thoughts. How many of you know if Satan came to you and offered you anything, you're likely to say no because you can see him. But when a thought comes, when a thought comes, so it says, so, and something else about temptation, you cannot be tempted unless you have a desire for something. So, so Jesus had a desire for what? Food. He was hungry. So Satan came and tempted him. Why don't you just turn? Why don't you just, instead of waiting until you get to the booker to eat food, why don't you just turn the stone here? After all, you are the son of God. You have the authority of your father. You see? He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What's happening? Satan is tempting him with thoughts. How is he responding? With words. There are times you have to speak up. And the more you speak up, the more your thoughts will align with what you are saying. Right now, as you sit right now, I want you to do something. I want you to think in your mind. You're going to think in your mind, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 20, right? Then you're going to say with your mouth, A, B, C, and just go down the line. At the same time, I want you to think in numbers, and I want you to say, to speak in alphabets, all right? At the count of three. When I count three, you start... In your mind, one, two, three, four. When I, when I count three, what happens? In, in your, your mouth, A, B, C. All right? Are you ready? Can we do this? One, two, three, go. Amen. What's going on? Here's the deal. If you keep speaking, your mind has to follow your words. Your mind cannot keep thinking something else when your, when your mouth is speaking something else. Your, 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 your mouth, your tongue carries what? Predominance. Preeminence. Hallelujah. So one of the ways to fix a wrong thought, start speaking. A thought of death comes. Speak up. I will not live. I will not die. I will live and not die. I will live and not die. I will live and not die. I refuse to be afraid. You are speaking. After a while, the only thing your mind can think about is what you're saying. Amen? And when you speak, always speak in line with God's word. That's what he did. Throughout the temptation here, everything he did, you know what he did? He used words. Satan brought, Satan spoke, right? And it came to him as a thought, right? What did he do? He spoke back and changed it. Amen? Go quickly with me to Hebrews 4, 14. Hebrews 4 and 14. Watch this. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Watch this. It says, it says Seeing Jesus, right? Now, let us hold fast our confession. What does that mean? Let's follow his example. Does that make sense? Now watch this. Look, look at next verse. Next verse. Who, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. How did he get to that point? He held fast to his confession. He says, you do the same. He says, if you hold fast to your confession, you will overcome sin. You will overcome what? Temptation. Words. Someone say words. We have to start being more deliberate about what we say. Don't just speak in a reactionary way. Especially when you're having conversations. That's when people usually start stumble. You're talking, just talking with your friends, and they just talk, they're just talking careless talk, and then you join them. Whenever I'm with people, I'm very cautious. Because I know that's when it is easy to just out, out of sympathetic response. 
say what somebody else said, but you don't believe it. So there are times I keep quiet. If I don't want to fight you, I just keep quiet. And then you get uncomfortable because I'm no longer talking on this frequency. Yeah. This is not my frequency. Yes, say amen. amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Is anybody ready for 2022? Yes, say 2022 yes. is my year of fullness. Yes. Say it. Next verse, watch this, next verse. Let us therefore come boldly. How do you come boldly? With words. How do I go to the throne of grace? With words. How do I obtain mercy? With words. Thank you, Lord, for mercy. When you say that, that thought of condemnation is squashed. When you said, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Your mercy endures forever. I receive your mercy. I've squashed the wrong thought. Say amen. amen. Ephesians 6, quickly. Ephesians 6 verse, verse 10. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. He says, be strong. Glory to God. He says, be strong. Which means the prerogative of being strong. Is mine, not God's. Which means God has given me everything I need to be strong. But I have to choose to be strong. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Next verse, watch this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Next verse. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the high places, in the heavenly places. That's a whole different story. Next verse. Therefore, watch this. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Withstand in what? The evil day. What is the evil day? The day Satan decides I'm going to strike. And how does it come striking? Speaking. He can't do anything until he has spoken. He understands spiritual dynamics. You should learn that you can't do anything meaningful until you have spoken. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That man, would, like, that you have a slapping hand, slapping hand, and you like slapping your wife for that slapping hand that is, uh, you know, speak. When that thought comes, I'm going to slap her. Say, see, just clear away from that environment, right? And then say, I will not slap her. It is wrong of me to slap my, my, my babe. I'm serious. Then you start saying, I love, I love her. I can't slap somebody I love. You see, this is warfare. You will notice the, the, the hand will get cold. Pastor, I couldn't control myself. I couldn't control myself. I just couldn't control myself. You know, I just had to slap her. Well, if you were driving down the road and someone hit your car from behind and you came out with your slapping hand and then the guy came out of his own car and you notice that <laughs> it looks like Kiliwi. Hallelujah. You know what you do, don't you? Jesus, I just want to give you praise. I've met my friend today, Lord Jesus. Your slapping hand becomes a worshiping hand. So you can control now. That's my point now. Lord, help us all. Amen. Glory to God. All right. It says, having done all, stand. They say, then stand. Which means, the onus of standing is mine. Do you see what's going on here? So if I don't stand, I cannot blame God. Now, now watch this. And I use this to close. Go to verse 16. Verse 16. It says, above all, taking up the shield of faith, 
with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Hmm. Someone says, shield of faith. Say fiery darts. Now look at verse 17, quickly. Look at it. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. This word, the, the, see, say sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God says, take it. Watch this. You see, this, this word of God here, this word mentioned here, is the word rema, which literally means utterance. It literally means a spoken word. So when it says, take the word, how do you take the word? You know, you come to church, you learn the word, right? You have the word in your, in your mind, you have it in your spirit, right? But that doesn't mean you have taken it. It means to pull out your sword. How do I do that? With words. By speaking. So until I speak, my sword is where? In its sheath. It's useless. No matter how much knowledge you have, until you speak, it can't help you. Now look at the verse before, verse 16. Verse 16. It says, take the shield of faith and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Come. Fiery darts. 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 Hmm? Throwing darts. The wicked one throws what? Darts. Fiery darts. What do you think those darts are? Words. That's his weapon, no? Outside of words, he has no weapon. So it tells me, take the shield of faith. Someone says shield. shield. This shield of faith literally means your shield of persuasion. In other words, that persuasion that you have built up over time, based on God's word, is your shield of faith. It says, when he throws a fiery dart, I should lift up what? My shield of faith and block it. Are you with me here? He says, the only way you can block a fiery dart is with what? The shield of faith. That's all. You don't fight evil with evil. You don't fight darkness with darkness. You put on the light. Now, let me tell you how the shield of faith works. Because you have you come to church, you hear the word, you built up, you built up a reservoir on the inside. Now, when you have a crisis, or when you have an attack, the evil day, when it starts to throw what? Darts at you. How do I know which word to use? The Holy Ghost lives in me. He brings up a word. Suddenly, I'm facing something. And I'm not sure what to say. Then so the Holy Ghost brings up something on the inside. I sense it. But if I don't say it, it's still inside. Does that make sense? So he keeps bringing up things for you to take it up. So he brings up a shield of faith. So the devil throws me something. Tells me you are never going to succeed in this matter. And then the Holy Ghost brings up something on the inside. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah. Hallelujah. The reason he brought it up is not just so you know because you already know. The reason he brought it up is for you to say it. I'm teaching you warfare now. Are you with me? So, it's an amazing thing. Satan throws darts. No, start throwing many darts. Many darts. Oh, yeah. Many, many. You are too slow. <laughs> say Satan is fast. Don't be, uh, uh, uh. So here's the amazing thing. That as the darts are coming, before they came, he knew which dart was coming. That's why he says, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Before it left his hand, doesn't matter how many, the Holy Ghost knew. And so you start noticing, you wake up in the morning and the word is bubbling in your spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he's throwing and it's coming up. You're blocking. Bah, 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 Let me show you the problem. Yeah, let me use this. Let me show you the problem. Some people have very little reservoir that is not much the Holy Ghost can dig up from. Some people, the only thing they know is the devil is a liar. <laughs> Anything that comes away, Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. That's what they have. Small shield. So, throw, throw, keep throwing. So, how can I block off? Many now, bros, many. How can I block, block off so many 
with a small shield. So guess what? Some will penetrate. Because your shield is small. Your shield is small. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know the big guy. Who's the big guy here? Praise the Lord. Yes. That's my shield. <laughs> Just come, come. Hallelujah. Just face, face me. No, you have to face me now. Hallelujah. Or you'll be throwing, be throwing, be throwing. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not touching me. It's not touching me. Are you with me? My shield is big. My shield is big. I'm just speaking. I'm speaking. It's bubbling inside me. Then I get to a certain point where I get angry. I pull out my sword. <laughs> he, knows, he knows how to do this thing well. Come on, clap your hands for them. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. The shield of faith is how you block the fiery darts of the enemy. He speaks a word Jesus spoke back. He said it is written, and this is, this is the, the danger. Satan will not attack you, usually. After a certain point, he will use his, God's word. Because he knows it can't come another way. You, you know enough to go past that point. So he brings the word. What are you supposed to do? It is also written. He comes again. He says, it is written. You say, it is also written. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He comes again and speaks. And then you speak back. It is also written. And before he recovers, you say, it is also written. Before he recovers, it is also written and written and written and written. So, okay, 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 okay. You've made your point now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now we're laughing. But this is real. This is how I survived. This is how I came out of a dead place. I spoke. I was in hospital. That morning, believe it or not, this makes no difference. I, mean, I know what happened to me. That morning, a witch came into my room and coughed in my face. I mean, it was physical. We, we were wrestling. All that happened, only thing left was just a running nose. That's all. So to me, no big deal. So I went out, got up in the morning and left. Ha. I suddenly started feeling very sick. And it was, it was rapid onset, very quick. Ha. So I just rushed back home. I just got into the house, took a few steps and fell. They rushed me to the hospital. They did x-ray said, man, this pneumonia is terrible. What happened? Nobody could explain. I couldn't explain. How would I tell them that a, a witch cock up in my face? So I'm lying on the bed. They, it looks like I'm dying. They're rushing around. They give me, trying to get antibiotics, you know, starting to give me antibiotics. And, and by around, this was in the evening, right? Because I, just, I went in the morning, came back by evening, I collapsed. So by around, around 10 p.m., I'm, I'm in the hospital, right? And I can tell when the doctors have given up. I can tell. This guy's not responding. This guy's not. I was, I was shaking. I was dying. And I knew it. I could feel my spirit about to leave my body. Around 12 midnight, around 12, maybe around 12, 1 or so, I heard in my spirit, you will not die but live to declare the glory of God in your generation. I knew that word wasn't just for information. So while I was shaking, I was shaking and dying, I began to say it. I will not, I will not die, I will live, I will live, I will live, like that. It was a mess. Everybody left. The only person in the was my mom, crying. What would she do? Amen? Amen. One, one, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I'm still talking, I'm talking. I know my life is in my mouth. I went on, I went on, I went on. Around 3 a.m., 
something hit my body. Just went and all the vibration stopped. I sat up. My mom said crying. <laughs> because you know, before they go, that's normally they show. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I told her, don't worry, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. She was crying more. Because I was no longer vibrating, I was no longer convulsing, I was just sitting up. I was sitting up. They said, please call the nurse. I called the nurse. Nurse came and just almost fainted. I said, please give me food, I want to eat. Food? Yeah, give me food. I'm sweating, I'm hungry, give me food. I've been walking. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Confucius. They started calling doctors, though. Consultant came very early in the morning. So what's going on here? So look at the guys, normal, no problem, normal. So quickly, do an x-ray. They did an x-ray, quickly. Listen, he put up both like this. And then called people to come and look. That he doesn't understand this. One case, full-blown pneumonia. One case, the lung is clear. And he's just like, wow. He said, when you start giving the antibiotics, they'll say, just, ah. But man, I knew what happened. Glory to God. That's how I left the hospital. I was ready to go. Why keep me here any further? I said, please, I need to be discharged. He said, no, we have to keep you for observation. I said, observe Guinea. I need to leave this environment. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They refused, though. So I became a bit of a nuisance. And I started walking around the whole place with my drip everywhere. <laughs> Walking at the hospital. He said, please discharge that man. Let him go. <laughs> Glory be to God. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. I went home. Having conquered. Yes, the evil day. With words. Rise to your feet. Yeah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Jo Glory to Jesus Christ. For the next two minutes. Open your mouth and start speaking. Open your mouth and start speaking. Don't speak what is. Speak what you want to see. 